Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we're going to do something completely unnecessary. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Uh, we have a bad signal mission here as a primary mission. We need to go up and orbit a probe with, mis uh, with communications antenna above Minmus. Minmus, because they're picking up another signal on Minmus and they want us to go over there. They can't quite pinpoint where it is, so we need a probe above the planet, or I guess above the, above the moon, um, so that we can uh, assess the location. And then I'm going to assume that we're supposed to, to land at that location, which we're going to do a, as well. We also need to do wheeling and dealing, launch a vessel with at least four wheels. We're going to have eight wheels today. What? Today? Yeah, that's right. We're going to do that today, too. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go to the research and development. We got 1765 science. Needless to say, I feel pretty badass about that. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to go to uh, tab number two here. We're going to go medium orbital rockets. Then we're going to come down to enhanced electronics. We're going to go to durable power systems, rovers, and finally autonomous sampling for 500. Now, the reason for going for this and like beelining it for this is because it gives us a new science experiment called the sample grabber. And I want to find out how that works. I would love also to have atmospheric science. You notice I did skip past that. It's only useful in bodies that have atmosphere. And after we're done with the mission that we're doing today, we're totally going to have enough science and we can then make a space plane or, you know, do things in Kerbin that have atmosphere. But really, we're not going to get a whole lot of good science with this until we go to Duna or Eve. And then um, we have 105 science left. So with that, I suppose I could go in and maybe look at monopropellant. Uh, yeah, monopropellant drive could be a good thing here. Maybe there's, you know, like little tiny engines and things like that. I don't know if it's really a necessary thing to get right now. I might even want to look into light aviation later. The thing about this, though, is we don't have to spend it now. I have everything I need uh, parts wise. Well, OK, I don't have everything I need parts wise. What I would really like to have and it would make this mission a little bit easier is to have uh, a smaller um I, I want a smaller stack separator right or a smaller i think it's enhanced coupling yeah right here i'd love to have this because it gives me a xs decoupler and an x uh, a stack separator you're gonna see why that would be handy uh in this video uh for uh a, a reason right that's i'm just gonna tell you a reason all right so we did everything in research and development let's over, head over to the re vehicle assembly building so today what we're going to build is a vessel that can carry multiple Kerbals because we're going to have this be a manned mission to the moon and Minmus in one flight. Not only we're going to go to the moon and Minmus in one flight, but we're also going to be landing on both and hopefully, hopefully returning home. If we can't return home, we'll do a rescue mission to Minmus to get them. All right. But I'm hoping that we can return home with this in the same thing. So we're going to use the new gumball Mark three pod. It's a stylish design. I like it has three seats on the inside, which is going to be helpful for us. Now, who is going to be the lucky Kerbals that are going to go off and rescue Jeb? It's going to be Val. Obviously, I also want to send uh, Bill. Bill hasn't done much. He's a classic Kerbal. We're going to send Bill on this mission, too. And then, of course, the empty seat for Jeb, because we're also going to be uh getting jeb i would also like to send some things uh something to the surface of both the moon and mimis that might set us up for future contracts i don't want to have to keep coming back for contracts that they're just going to give us like this right so we're going to set ourselves up in advance for future contracts if it's possible and this is the part where we're doing something pretty needless because today we're going to be dropping off a rover on the moon and Minmus. We're going to do all these things in one flight. You're probably thinking to yourself, if you're a veteran of the game, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, wait a minute. Manned mission, landing on the moon, dropping off a rover on the moon. Uh, what? How are you going to do all these things and have enough fuel to get home? Mm, let's answer that question. <laughs> let's, let's, let's actually answer that question. So uh, we're going to put a nose cone on the top of that because we're not going to need the parachutes at the top. We don't have big parachutes. I'm limited in parts. So I have to work around the limitations of my parts too, because I don't have a whole lot of parts. Uh, so what I like to do first is set up survivability. We're going to take these radially mounted parachutes. 
And we are going to put... I wanted to say we're going to put three of these on here. And you know what? I think I am going to put three of these on here. Only because of how they line up with the stairs. This pot is a little weird and how it kind of... Uh, well, it's just, it's just kind of weird. So we're going to put this pod, I think, right about here. Should be good. It doesn't obstruct anything on that side. It seems fine. I mean, this little window here, whatever is this little latch, whatever the heck that is, design element. Uh, looks like it's something for a thruster. Yeah, it might be something for control. We don't need it. It's fine. We're going to end up covering that up anyway. <laughs> We're going to cover it up with the draw shoots. So the draw shoots are going to be right on top of that. Pop. There we go. And now we have survivability for these guys. I'm also going to put in some electrical. And we're going to use these new collapsible solar panels. Uh, the ones that uh, actually come back in would be nice. Right about here on the bottom of that. Let's see how they look. Uh huh. Looking pretty good. I like it. So we're going to use those as well. Seems nice. Uh, at the bottom of this, I haven't decided if I want to put the heat shield directly on it. I think they're coming back with just this. I think that's how we're coming back. And we're not going to put a science junior on this. Because one, we've already ran this experiment, but two, since we're going to Midmus, you're thinking, oh, we haven't run that experiment. And you're right on that. But this unit here has the same experiment. It's the same thing. And we're going to use uh, these instead. All right. So what's the next step? Next step is our new decoupler. So it's a medium one. It's going to go right there. I think it's, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And then we're going to need to set up the lander configuration. Now, this lander configuration is not going to have landing legs. We don't need it for Minmus. It's really nice to have it for the moon. But if we're careful, it's going to cost us some extra fuel. But if we're careful and we play our cards right and we know what we're doing, we won't need it. We can just, if we land straight down on flat ground, which is exactly where we're going, because we have to rescue Jeb and he's in that flat area it's also dark and there's rocks but you know hey there's some risks <laughs> there's some risks involved um we're going to go ahead and have fuel tanks we're going to have this big one right here i haven't i haven't decided if i want to use this uh which probably would be better to use this than the big one this is a really big tank but at the same time i mean i want to also I need enough room for everything as well. Let me see how much Delta V is in this. We're going to be using a new engine. This is the Poodle. The Poodle's fantastic for its ability to uh, burn efficiently, but it doesn't have a whole lot of thrust. We're dealing with just a measly 215 here. To where Compare that to the other one at this size, which gives us 600. We're going to use both of these today, uh, but it's better than the Terrier. That's 60. We need more though because this is a much this is all much heavier it's much bigger um so yeah this is uh i don't know if we should use something this big but uh we'll see i'm just designing it here uh with you guys so we'll see uh, i've got it in my head and i'm pretty sure it'll work but uh you know it's uh this is kind of what i do what i do on this channel if you're new here hi uh, i kind of do things in my head and kind of figured out how i want it somewhat and then i design it with you guys because I feel like it's more immersive that way. Like you guys just get to see how the, the thought process goes behind everything. And every once in a while, you know, I will go in and say like, okay, I need to tweak this. I need to kind of fine tune everything. And it, that's the boring stuff. You guys don't want to see me reversing decisions and being indecisive. So I, for the most part, I'll design almost all of it with you. Uh, and then I'll probably cut and say, okay, I've refined everything here. Here's how it really going to work. All right, so uh, we got uh, electric, a generation. We don't have storage, so let's grab storage. Uh, we're going to use these batteries here, and I'm thinking we go. Do we really need three rows? We could just line it up with with this. It wouldn't be in the way of the ladder if we did that, right? I think so. I think we'll line them up with the solar panels. So we're going to say uh, there, and then there, and then there, and you know what? One more is fine, although these things do have mass. Not much, but they do have some. Maybe we'll get rid of that one. Yeah, I'll get rid of that one. I think that's enough electric generation anyway. If we're transmitting, 
right? Like we might you go through our we might go through our power, but we have solar panels too. The only problem we have here is if we're transmitting at the night, which is you know whatever we can always hold it. We're coming back anyway, right? Mm -hmm, wink, wink. Okay, so next thing here, I'm thinking. Uh, one, I want to have my drogue shoots in a different slot. So there we go. And we have everything kind of configured this way. This is good. Uh, let's go in and get decoupling like there. And we're also going to want... I'm taking a look at where things are lined up here. And I think maybe... Let's do this instead. I think we go four rows on this stuff. We want it to line up yeah just don't line up where the where the ladder is but do it like about here i think we're gonna go like this with the power instead because we're gonna use the sides of this thing okay for something really crazy that shouldn't work but we're gonna make it work uh let's scroll back down here we're gonna take two more fuel tanks the big ones one one two and then give me the skipper. Pop, skipper. All right, now, what does the skipper have for an ISP? Like, all by itself, not ISP, uh, TWR is what I mean. My thrust to weight ratio. Uh, it's at 0.96. Again, these numbers are very small. If anyone knows how to make these bigger, please let me know. Because it's killing me. It's killing me how small these stupid numbers are. And I, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to. The game is beautiful. I don't want to go below 4K, all right? I don't, all right? This channel's been doing nothing but 4K content for three years. I, I don't I don't want to change, all right? Like, I want the game to change for me. <laughs> uh, at the bottom of this, I think we're going to add boosters. I mean, we got to add boosters. Uh, boosters, 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 boosters. We're going to need, we're going to need boosters. How about we do coupling first? That makes more sense. And we'll just pop that there. And then uh, for the boosters, we're going to have to use the big one. The kickback. Yeah, we need the kickback on here. And then I'm thinking, ah, man, you know, we might need to make this taller. I'm thinking six. I think we're going to need six. You can do six of these kickbacks just like that. And then we're going to need a little bit of stability so we can control this sucker. So I think we'll do six of these uh at the bottom man you know what i feel like we need another stage you know what? i think we do need another stage one more stage nope that's not how we do this we need one more stage here coupling like that like that is a long now it's a really long rocket and then i need a, a yeah another skipper i guess it's gonna need to be a big engine so another skipper i guess and then this one will go with six boosters on this side. Now you're thinking, you might be thinking, man, dude, you're making this way, way bigger than you need. But trust me, you, yeah, you don't know, all right? You don't know what you don't know yet, all right? What we're doing on the sides of this rocket, what we're, we're taking with us. If you knew, you'd say, okay, well, first off, that's ridiculous. And second off, okay, I see your point and why you need all these boosters. <laughs> All right, we're going to put these little wings down here. That's going to add some extra stability. And then finally, we're going to pop some nose cones there to make it a little more aerodynamic. Not that it'll matter because we're about to make this rocket very unaerodynamic. All right, so this is the basics of what we're going to be doing here. You see, we have a lot of Delta V. We're up to almost 8,000. We need it because we're going all the way to the moon. We're going to land on the moon, get Jeb, drop off a rover. We're just currently not configured on this rocket yet lift off go to minmus uh figure out where the signal is land at the location of the signal wherever it is hopefully not the poles but hey i don't know where it's going to be and then after we're done landing there dropping off another rover then we got to get back home okay so we need fuel and uh currently this stage is uh kind of absurd this stage currently has a 1.9 thrust weight ratio. I like it. What if it's only the boosters, though? If I uh, if I only had the boosters, what's that going to be? 165. Really? This, this engine ain't adding hardly anything, is it? This is not adding a lot. Um, how, how's the atmosphere here? 
Mm, okay, so the stage is going to have three one eight when this is firing. That's not bad. Okay, I like this. So we're going to fire the six boosters first. We're going to have almost no control of this thing. Then we fire this to get control. So we'll have this take us up as high as it can. Uh, then we'll depart that, get rid of that. This will take us to space, but not orbit. Then, uh, nope. Wait, this needs to be before. Uh, this goes, yep, like that. There we go. So this will take us to space, but not orbit. Then we get rid of all these things. Uh, this takes us to orbit and hopefully to the moon as well. And maybe if I do this correctly, maybe this stage can also at least get us captured and orbited and aligned on the moon so that we can, uh, use the rest of this fuel to, um, you know, line ourselves up for the landing. But the ultimate landing will probably get taken care of by this stage. If the design calls, the design calls for this stage to land us. So I just don't want to use much fuel. I'm hoping that this covers almost all the fuel we need to land. And then we can drop this stage, let it, you know, destroy itself or just become space junk right next to Jeb's craft. Uh, and then this one will, will do the final the finalization of the landing. That's what I'm hoping it does. We'll see. Okay. So what's the next thing we need? Well, let's design our rover. Hmm? Cool thing about Kerbal Space Program 2 is that you can design multiple crafts right next to each other. Independent crafts. So that means we can design a rover. I happen to have this RoveMate probe since I just got the research for it. And so here is the RoveMate probe. And if we want to design this, we just simply go pop and we can zoom in on it. And now this is what we're focusing on. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what side is the front on this. I bet it's probably determined by my on my ground stuff here. We're going to use some rover wheels today, of course. And uh, the rover wheels are how we're going to satisfy the requirements for our mission where we launch a craft with four wheels. This is going to satisfy this, but we're also going to have two of these. I don't know how we're getting two of them. You'll see. Okay. So first we need to design what it looks like. Let's talk about the bottom first. I think the bottom is pretty interesting here. So we're going to have two batteries or two sets of batteries. So I want to go about, uh, I want to rotate it like this. There we go. One battery there and the other battery is going to be over here. Like, so we're going to leave some space in the middle. That mounting point and the middle is very important because we're going to actually place a, uh, whichever one of these has the, the best reaction wheel, it's going to be you. Yeah. We need the XS form factor and we need a really good reaction wheel. And this is all we have is 0.5 kilonewtons. It's not great, but we're going to do it. Okay. Now this right here is a little bit, I, I don't usually like clipping, but I will say that in the course of designing something like this. I think it's reasonable that they would design the batteries to be recessed into the body a little bit. It would be sort of like, you know, they would have some kind of a, a recessed cavity for batteries for changing batteries. So I think that's reasonable. So we would, we would bring this in and you know, we would say the batteries can be sunk in about like, say that far and the control module down here isn't really what's going to be controlling this, at least not always. But I'm going to recess this in a little bit too, because I think it looks better. Okay. So that's going to be uh, the bottom of our rover. Uh, for the top side, we need two things. I need my science experiment, the new sample grabber. This thing's going up here. Now I have no idea which way is forward. I have to see the animation first. So I'm just going to start with that and hope that that's it. And then we're going to put some communications on this thing just in case we need it. So we'll pop that down right about, let's say, here. I don't know exactly how that thing's going to open. So maybe it's going to swing into the antenna. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and then the final thing is we need uh, some power. I'm going to place two solar panels. If it lets me do it side by side, it'd be great. Yep. I'm going to place two solar panels down right here. And then we'll move this over a bit more. Uh, cause apparently it's not in a good spot anyway. We'll put it right there. And you know what? Let's, let's say that, you know, you would have this recessed in a little bit too, right? Just a little bit. I think so. Uh, 
We're gonna put two solar panels on the top of this, mostly serving as redundancy in case something happens to the main solar panel, which is gonna be this bad boy. And we're gonna say it's gonna go in right about like that. We've rotated it to be the correct direction so that the flap opens down. Nope. We sure didn't. <laughs> there we go. And so the flap opens, opens down like that. And it shouldn't be on the wheels. The wheels are rock solid. Speaking of the wheels, let's configure those. We want no auto suspension control. I want the spring strength in this to be two and the damper strength to be 1.5. And we can always adjust these in mid flight too, but I'm going to start them off like this. And I think depending on whether these are the rear wheels, I I'm trying to design this with the solar panels on the back. So assuming these are the rear wheels, we will have steering disabled uh, on this too. Um, I, could, I guess I could always invert steering too invert motors that would take care of the front and back part wouldn't it yeah uh and then this side here is gonna do the same thing no auto suspension because auto suspension in this game and everything is just really squishy and bouncy it's just like ksp1 so we're gonna go about like that so we're gonna control how stiff the springs and stuff are okay so i'm liking what i see we need to test it though to make sure it works and since we can do that in this game with two separate crafts in the same bit as long as you click the one you want to test. So this is the one that's launching now, and this is now the one that's launching. We want to launch this one uh, to see what it's like and see whether it's going to work or not. So let's just launch this really quick. And right away, that's going to complete the objective, but we're going to revert anyway. So when you revert the flight, you don't get the objective. It's as if you never did it, right? So uh, we, got, we got the mission, but um, you know, if we revert flight, we won't have it anymore. So that was a little weird. The solar panel seemed to disconnect for a second there, but ultimately though, it is going the direction I want it to go, which is cool. Let's see how this thing looks real quick. Ooh, I like it. So it's going to just go forward, do its thing, pick its head back up. And it doesn't look like it would ever get in the way of the antenna. Although I will say, I think I feel better about the antenna being located on this side. This side's a little crowded, I think. Well, let's just see that animation one more time with the antenna up. Let's see. The antenna's up. Does that clip? I think it's too close. If nothing else, I think it's too close. I don't think you would want it to be that close to the antenna. And there's no reason not to put it over here where it's not in the way of the extra arm. It would totally be safer over on this side, right? So I think we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and revert back to VAB. And if we revert back to the VAB, we, we can pick up right where we left off. All right, so we're going to take this antenna and we're going to take this and put it over here instead. And I don't know what you think you're doing. But that's not what I want you to do. And it's mo much easier usually. No, I guess not. Say, normally it's easier just to reset the damn thing than it is to re uh, to go out and uh, try to reposition it. But that's apparently not true this time. So we're going to flip it up like that. Very good. And let's go ahead and sink it down. And we're going to put it right there instead. I just think it makes more sense being there. The other thing I'd like to do uh, is the science junior. And we're going to put that on the front. I just wanted to see which direction this thing goes before I put it there. So we're going to put this thing on the front right about like this. And then I want to same thing here. Just going to, you know, make sense for it to have a little recession uh, for the science experiments. So we're going to put it right there now. The hope is, and based on what I saw just now, I think this arm is going to go in front of this and not clip. So this would be our rover. I think it's a nifty little rover. I think it's a really good rover. I think it's going to do some great things for us. So the next thing is, how do we get this rover on that rocket? And then how do we get two of them on that rocket? It's a very good question. And the answer to that question is... First off, let's switch over to this craft here and we'll just pop it here just so we can see the numbers. Uh, I'm going to add some stuff to the side for this. So to do that, I need to find a part <clears throat> that will let me uh, fasten something to the side. All right. So I can have these decouplers and stuff on the side. And I think there's a structural part that will do this for me. I think these little panels will do it. And so if I was to go with two, 
and then rotate it like this, I believe we would get it right there. And it looks like it just belongs, All right? It looks like it's just meant to be. And the cool part about this meant to be surface is it has an attachment point that's radially out. So I can take my decoupler, for example, and I can put it on there. And I would want to do that with the arrow pointed uh, at my craft. So we're going to flip that over and go like that. Uh, is that how I want to do that? Yeah, because this would mean that it gets detached in the direction of the arrow. So if I was to decouple this, this part comes off of my craft. That's what I'm looking to. It basically, it stays attached to whatever's opposite of the arrow. Now, this is different than a stack separator. If you haven't played the game before, stack separator and stack decouplers are different. Stack decoupler only detaches from one side. Stack separators, on the other hand, detach from both sides. They're going to let go. So essentially, the separator ends up being independent, floating around all by itself when it's done. Right. And this is really useful for things where you're taking up um, on, a, on a, like a space plane or in a cargo bay or whatever. You're taking up cargo that needs to act independently and you don't want to have this thing attached to it while you're doing things. So you can end up having your main craft and not have this attached anymore and your cargo also. In this case, though, I don't really care. So we're going to do this. So this is going to basically stay attached to whatever else I put over here. And what I'm going to put over here is just a little fuel tank. Tiny little fuel tank right there. Methyl ox will be in this and uh, we'll just have some extra fuel which we can then use with our fuel management system to pump into this tank when we uh, use any from this. We can just have that. We will be using this fuel a little bit anyway uh, to land on the moon. And so there will be some space for us to push fuel from these tanks into here before we detach it. In order to do that, I need to make sure that my fuel cross feed. I don't really need the cross feed on, but I'm going to do it anyway, because that way we're going to pull fuel from this while we go. Uh, it just means I won't have to pull, uh, push as much into there. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter. It's really quick to transfer. All right. So the next thing to do is to have my stack decoupler again. And we want to now face it this way and pop it right there. Okay. So this module now is ready to receive our rovers. Uh-huh. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do, I'm telling you, uh, it's like I've, it's like it's meant to be, man. Uh, first thing I want to do is make this the part that everything is, is fastened to or the root part. It doesn't really call it root part in this game. Uh, they instead call it the assembly anchor. And so we're going to choose this part as the assembly anchor. And uh, once that's completed, I can then essentially have this part be attached to other things. If I don't do that, then the attachment point on the bottom of this is really hard to, to actually use. So now it's much easier to use. I can pick this part and we're going to come over here. And all I'm going to do is rotate this thing so that it's facing down. And that's important. I want it to face down. All right. What this does is it gives us two rovers facing down at the landing point. So when we land on the moon, here's the plan. You control from this and that's going to change your, your navigation dial to where you're looking at the horizon because it's going to be your control is going to be relative to this. If you control from this, then you'll end up seeing the ground, which is a little less clear as to which direction you need to go. But this one makes it very clear. I'm going to do this. Then what I'm hoping happens, and I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm hoping happens is that the reaction wheel inside this is just enough for me to be able to essentially hold down or up or whichever direction I need to hold at the time to tip this nose up high enough as it falls so that this thing will land on its wheels. Now, there's a backup plan in case that doesn't happen. And it may not happen on the moon because the gravity is stronger, but I'm a mimic, it probably will. Either way, if this the backup plan works on the moon, then it'll definitely work on Mimis. And that is to use the built in reaction wheel that's in this probe, which is why I chose this probe um, to just roll it over and hope that it can roll over. If it needs some help rolling over, we can always roll it in the opposite direction of this antenna. And then as we're rolling it, we can extend the antenna, which would give it a little push. <laughs> so that's the plan anyway. That's, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Uh, okay. So this is our, our rocket that we're going to lift off with. Uh, I mean, I think it's, 
I think it's a thing of beauty, to be honest. I do need to do a little bit of refinement, I think, to make sure that we're uh, ready to go. It's probably a good idea to test flight this to see if it can even get to orbit. Uh, we have plenty of Delta V, but it's all about like how like thrust weight and everything, right? So we're going to put these two things staged together and just kick them to the top because there's no reason to have them staged. We're going to do that manually anyway. And uh, I want this to go away. So we have this stage first, then the engines. Then we get rid of the boosters. Then we get rid of this. Pump this. This takes us to orbit. Hopefully also to the moon and transition. We'll see. Then we get rid of that. And uh, this here will land us. And from there, we're, oh, we're on the landing party. All right. We're just the landing party at that point. Maybe we have too much fuel. Maybe we have not enough thrust. I have no idea. Shall we do a test flight to see how this works? We're going to call this one um, Crazy Rescue. Uh, this is Crazy Rescue Plus. Because, you know, everybody puts plus at the end of things, right? And that makes it better. So this is Crazy Rescue Plus. Now, I was dinking around with some other ideas. They don't seem to be showing up, though, so that's fine. Uh, we're going to say uh, Rover Delivery <laughs> over here. And this is Crazy Rescue Plus. Yep, save. Good. All right. So... I think we're going to test flight this first. We, we should definitely make sure that this is going to work. We have Valentina and Bill in there. Let's uh, let's just go in here and see if it's even possible to achieve orbit with this. Now, right away, we are going to complete the task to launch a craft with four wheels because we do actually have four wheels on this. It's not they're not on the ground, but there are four wheels here. So uh, we'll have we'll have that. Let's go ahead and launch this really quick. Just to make sure it can get off the ground because I have yet to test this idea and uh, I need to. <laughs> All right, so obviously we're lacking a bit of aerodynamics at the top. And we also have almost no control of this thing right now because there's no gimbling at all on these engines. So I have really no vectoring on my craft at all, but there is a little bit I can do because I've got those reaction wheels. They can influence it slightly. And that's okay and then i think to get us up there because we're not going very fast i'm gonna have to ignite that other engine and uh that is gonna give us more control we still have to be careful because we can tip over here pretty quickly but that is gonna give us more control and more thrust and i am really worried that we don't have nearly enough thrust <laughs> i'm gonna have to fire this engine sooner i think that is this is not good uh here we go we have some heating effects happening over there that ain't good either all right, so we're actually slowing down right now, which is no bueno. Uh, that's no bueno. <laughs> slowing down, so we're we're lacking a little bit on the uh, thrust to weight department down here on this one. The stage is not very strong, and we're going to end up having, uh, I think, a problem reaching altitude here. Uh, so we can fix that kind of by just firing this stage for like earlier. And I think that's probably what we need to do is fire this earlier, but I just want to see how far we get with it. To be honest, like it's one of those things where maybe it'll be okay. And I just didn't realize it, you know, let's turn it, turn it this way. And uh, let's just see what happens. If we, if we face it this direction like this, what do we get? Uh, is it going to get to space? The next stage is supposed to be the thing that will take us to the moon and line us up. So, uh, like this, this stage kind of needs to get us at least most of the way to orbit because the other stage isn't going to be able to get us to orbit and the moon and line up and start the landing. Like it can't do all of those things. So this stage really needs to get us, uh, at least get us, get us close to orbit. And, uh, I don't think it's going to, I think I need to fire it sooner. Uh, it's maybe, it depends on how much fuel. I have a lot of fuel on this next stage. Maybe it'll be all right. But it's really a thrust to weight problem here because I'm not, we're not going fast enough. We only have 26 seconds to apoapsis and this is, uh, we're not accelerating fast enough. I really need this to go faster. But this is why we do test flights. This is why we want, we want to see what it does, right? We got to see how does this craft react and how do we want to, you know, change it to, to make this mission work.
Maybe it'll accelerate faster with the next stage. The next stage has the exact same engine, but we won't, of course, have uh, all of this extra stuff here. So, But it's the same engine. It's, it's going to be pushing a little bit less stuff. 14 seconds to Apoapsis. And we're going to get it rid of that. Push this. And uh, let's go, go, go. Come on. Nine seconds, eight seconds. Yeah, we have to kind of go off axis here a little bit to... Yeah, I don't think it's going to make it. I think this needs to be adjusted to where it has... Uh, we, we need better thrust away at the, the lower stages because we're not even in space yet. Like, all this burning, we're not even in space yet. And we're about to hit apoapsis, which is now, pretty much. And our apoapsis is still in atmosphere. So we definitely need more thrust away at the lower stages to make this happen. Um, I think the rest of this is probably fine. That's a lot of good delta V there. So if we can get more thrust at the bottom to push us up, maybe more boosters. It's possible more boosters is the solution here. I don't know. Um, we are technically rising here. Hang on. We, we actually might... This actually might work. We got like right at apoapsis and then the clock started going up and our altitude is still climbing. So we actually may get to orbit with this. It's very, it's very, we designed it very close to the chest. But I'm going to say it's possible. Right. Depends on the angle and everything that I'm, that I'm going here, but now I'm basically facing the horizon. I'm on, I'm on prograde vector right now. And uh, that's the most optimal. And I think in that we just made orbit with this stage. It's the, the fact, though, is that it doesn't have hardly any fuel left. And this is the stage, right, that's supposed to take us to the moon. It doesn't have any fuel left. Also, this thing's burning up. Uh, why is that burning up? Why is it burning up? game why is it burning up i'm really i'm basically in space there's no reason for that to be burning up why are you getting why are you getting warmer you're blinking at me what the hell that doesn't make any sense game video game you don't make any sense come on get in space yeah, we're definitely getting orbit with this. There's no doubt about it. And that actually, if you look at the launch profile that I just did, it's actually really efficient. I mean, that's actually really good. Look at that, man. Look at that orbit. We're really low, just above the atmosphere. We barely made it, but it's, it's just outside, man. It's going to work. What I don't get, though, is why this shit is, over, is overheating when we're 200 meters into the atmosphere. What the hell? These solar panels are getting too hot? What? What is it? Let me see the flight record. Uh, vessel destroyed. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, this is from testing. I was testing other things. Um, okay. So we're good here. We made orbit. I mean, not completely yet. We still have to get to apoapsis before we do, but like we basically made orbit, which is crazy. So we'll just zoom ahead just a little bit here to get on the top. And there we go. And this is probably close enough. We'll just face prograde. Oh. This has 652, which is not enough to get us to the moon. <laughs> it really does. This, this stage needs to get us to the moon. Um, that's the problem right now that I foresee is that it's not capable of, of getting us to the moon because it used too much fuel to get it to orbit. We still got to orbit, but it used too much fuel to do so. That's the problem. So right now we are now officially in orbit and uh, we will never come back to Kerbin at, at this point. We're, we're, we're safely in space now, um, but there's not enough fuel to get us to the moon. You need about 800 to 850, depending on how you time it. So like this will probably be like 820 or something to get there. All right. We do this. We can go out a little bit. Uh, that's not timed very well at all. Is it 869? That's expensive. Well, okay. The other thing is we have a really low orbit too. So it's, we're going to pay a little more. So maybe, maybe that is like, it's probably accurate. 
uh, but that's getting us into the, the moon right there so i mean 875 is obviously not something we have with this stage and that would also create space junk we don't want to do that so i need to amend my craft just a little bit to make some changes to see if i can make that happen we need more thrust away in the, the back at the back end and if we can do that successfully it may just be as simple as like making this tank smaller or you know doing like a half tank on this one just to give that bottom stage a little bit more oomph uh at the expense of fuel on this side or we just add more boosters i don't know give me a second i'll be right back all right so i've made a couple of modifications to this and um or at least we're about to make some modifications to it uh the first one is instead of using the skipper which has 282 seconds of specific impulse that's uh, again, for those who aren't familiar, that's its efficiency rating, right? It's ISP. And so it's 282 seconds in atmosphere. I don't want to get any less efficient if I can help it, but I need stronger engines. I need something that has a lot more thrust. So this one here has 525 in atmosphere. I would like more than that. And I don't actually currently have an engine that can do that. However, if I was to add four of the swivels, we would still have gimbling. We have basically the same ISP, but we would have four times 188, which is more than the 525 uh, that this is going to have. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've got four of the swivels underneath here instead now. And I think that's going to provide me with the thrust that I need to make this thing go where it needs to go. Then I'm going to offset it a little bit, but I'm going to need it because uh, I've just realized something that when we go to the moon and we drop off one of our probes here we drop off one of our rovers here uh we're gonna be dropping half of this off we're gonna keep the other side that means there's gonna be a considerable imbalance and i'm gonna need something that can fight against that imbalance okay now the poodle engine does have five degrees vectoring that's good all right it's, it can gimbal but it may not be strong enough to really offset that so to make sure that it is underneath the pod here I'm going to place a, if I can find it where it would be, uh, the utility. Yeah, I'm going to place one of these. This is a medium sized reaction wheel. We're going to pop that right there. And when we do that, we now have a lot more control over this top side, I think. I think that's going to be uh, a much better, much better deal if we can do that. So, um, we have just real quick check on the staging again because we just messed up with some parts here so real quick check on the staging we are going to see these two fire at the same time then eject this and we've got these two this is hot stage so they're going to fire at the same time uh then this is not good we don't want that so we're definitely going to want to adjust and have only this one i'm not sure why there was three in the picture there for a second but yeah uh, we definitely want this stuff to change so we have these things and with that that's fine these aren't even going to be there when we're done uh this parachute can come up to here that's the drogue shoots and then this can fire uh after that before that yeah there we go that's better all right staging is fixed i think we're good here let's go ahead and save the changes to our crazy rescue plan crazy rescue plus uh i think the only other thing i did uh i've been messing with as i'm gonna add lights to the rovers and uh i have to do these kind of individually let's just get this thing to focus um i need to do this kind of individually because there's not really a uh a good way to do this with symmetry while it's on this unless i take it off and then yeah re reapply it but i don't want to do that and mess with my staging so we're just gonna have these lights on there and hopefully that means we'll be able to uh you know see where we're going in the dark because we already know that we're landing on the dark side of the moon so, okay, I think we're ready to launch then. So let's go ahead and do that. 